Not only can we have transformations that are horizontal and vertical translations like we did before, you know, ticking up functions and moving them left or right uh, or up or down, but we can also do horizontal and vertical stretches. So here we're sort of stretching things out and moving them. So to show you a little bit about uh, how these work, um, I can give you an example here. Uh, first of all, we have, let's say we have y equals, and I'll call it, I need a letter, uh, p, p times f of x. So if I have some function and I multiply something in front of it, what that means is it's a vertical stretch. Of, uh, oops, actually I should say uh, by a factor of p units. Okay, so um, so p units. Again, I'm just needing some arbitrary letters here, but y equals p times f of x. The key thing is here that anytime you have a number in front of the function, then you do a vertical stretch by a factor of p units. Now, of course, you can do a uh, you can do the opposite of a stretch. So let's say we say f of and I need another letter. Maybe I say q times x. So what this means is this time we have a number in front of this. So this time it's a um, horizontal stretch. Whoops. Uh, and actually, I should say something different. It's actually not a stretch. See, even I got messed up there. Uh, these ones right here, uh, again, they're in the brackets. So like we were doing before with the translations, how things in the brackets do opposite of what you think, here, these were doing, uh, like outside here for this vertical stretch, it was uh, what you think, so to speak. In other words, if you put a two here, it means it stretches it by two. And if you put it a five here, it makes it five times sort of stretched up and down. Uh, but here, if you put a number, let's say a two here, it's opposite of a stretch. It works opposite to what you think. So in this case, it's a horizontal compression. So it's like it's squished by a factor of, well, in this case, since I drew a Q, then it'll be, oops, a factor of Q units. So what this means, so this is also sort of opposite to what you think. Okay, so these are here. So the horizontal stretch, or sorry, compression, I guess horizontal, I should say, is opposite to what you might think. So to what you expect. And again, I need some other uh, tacky, tacky things just to make sure I make this look absolutely obvious that this is something really weird. So this one here is opposite to what you expect here. This is what we're doing here. These are opposites to what you expect. So I'll give you an example here. Now the parent, so we're going to be doing a stretch this graph. So y equals 2 sine x. So here we have a 2 in front of the sine x. All right, and just like we learned over here, with something in front of the f of x, then it's a stretch by a factor of p units. So here then, this one is going to be a, uh, let's say, vertical stretch by two units. So what this means is we're going to take our parent function, which is sine x, and we're going to stretch everything by two. So if we remember how a sine x looks, this is x, this is y. Um, like we were doing before, I'm going to draw a dotted line for what just y equals sine x looks like. Okay, so sine x normally does like this. It actually goes everywhere else. It continues on this way and this way, but I'll just draw the first period of it. So from zero to two pi, turns out that's what it's called. Now normally this right here goes from one to minus one. However, we've stretched it by two. So that means this whole thing is going to be Oops, like this right here. Uh, that means this point's going to stay the same because you can think about where this point is. It's like whatever its distance is from the x-axis will get multiplied. So if it's at zero, it's still going to be zero. But let's look at this top point right here. It was at one unit away from the x-axis. That Now it's going to be times two. So it's going to be up here.
This middle point right here is going to stay there because 0 times 2 is still 0. However, over here, this point, right, which is at negative 1, is going to now be at negative 2. And this one's going to be like this. So it's going to look like, and this is what I like to imagine, it's almost like uh, you have some sort of rubber band that you just pull and stretch. So it's like you took this piece and you pulled it up. It's like you took this piece and you pulled it down. So this is what a vertical stretch does. Now let's look at this graph though, y equals sine of 2x. Do you notice this time the 2 is in the bracket, it's in the parentheses. So this is what we just talked about here. It's a horizontal compression. So we would expect it to be a stretch, but it's inside the bracket, so it's opposite to what you expect. So in that case then, if I wanted to draw this, I could, in the same way right here, draw my, whoops, my parent function. I did a really bad job there with that line. So here we go. So I'm going to draw my parent function. It goes up and down and back, and this is 1, and this is negative 1. That's what sine x wants to look like. But I've got 2x, and what this means, remember, this is a horizontal. Now we think it's a stretch, so actually it's a compression. That means it's squished by uh, two units. In other words, this whole thing right here is going to be squished, which means it's going to, uh, imagine now everything right here is going to be just squished by a factor of two. So what that means is that this part here is going to stay there. This time we're looking at how far they are from the y-axis. And this one over here before, well, I better label these properly. This was actually 2 pi. If you're not sure about radians, don't worry. Uh, that comes later on. But this is 2 pi radians. This is pi. This turns out, because uh, what you do is you take this whole length here, divide it by 2 to get this. So 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. And if I want half of that again, that's where this point is. Well, that's pi over 2. Now, of course, I want to label this value right here. So what's this? Well, I can count by pi over 2. So this is 1 pi over 2. This is 2 pi over 2. So this is 3 pi over 2. Now, what I do then is this point right here, which was at 0 units away, stays the same. This point, however, which was over at pi, gets squished by a factor of 2. In other words, it has to go to half of what it was. So it becomes here. And then this point over here, which was at 2 pi, that one moves over here to pi. In other words, what has to happen then is this whole thing right here, it doesn't get squished up and down or stretched, but it'll do this. So it'll be like you took your original graph right here and you just squashed it. It's like a big sort of hand, you know, squished your whole thing this way. You just sort of sat on it or squished it this way. This one right here, it's like you you know, took your hand and sort of stretched it this way and this way. Oops, I'm not a very good arrow drawer apparently. There's a reason why I didn't go into art. I think you can see why. So this one was sort of stretched that way. This one was sort of just squashed that way. Turns out, by the way, that if you had something on the other side, it would also be squashed that way. It's just that I didn't draw it, but it would have been squished this way too. So this is what happens. You can stretch or squish this way, or you can stretch or squish this way. So a student might ask, well, how do we get this thing right here to actually be squished instead of stretched? You know, in, in other words, what if I want it to look like down here? Well, I have to do something that's less than 1. So it turns out if I did y equals 0.5 sine x, that would actually do this. Because you could think about multiplying by 0.5 is like dividing by 2. So uh, I don't know if that was confusing, but in any case, if you look at these graphs, this is how this works. Sine of 2x, because it was in the bracket, it tells you it's horizontal, and it does opposite to what you expect, so it's a compression. This one right here, however, was something right outside of the function, so if it's right outside of it, that means it's a vertical stretch. It works like you would expect. And number 2 makes it stretch by 2. If I made it 5, it would be 5 times higher. If I made this 0.5, it would be half as big. So it would be down here, and this point would be here. So that's how these things right here work. They're actually quite, quite useful.